Religion is central to the lives of billions of people around the globe. Yet religion often seems to have two faces. It can instill a sense of care and compassion towards others, but it can also foment hatred and violence, as we have witnessed in recent years. Robert Eisen, a professor of religion, has been exploring these two sides of religion, particularly with respect to the Abrahamic faiths of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, to better understand and cultivate relationships that are based on coexistence, not bloodshed, amongst followers. Welcome, Dr. Eisen. Thank you. How did you get interested in this particular area? Well, uh, my career certainly didn't start with a focus on this area. Um, I actually began as a scholar of medieval Judaism. But after 9-11, I and I think uh, a majority of Americans began to realize that uh, religious violence was one of the most defining issues of our time, if not the most defining issue of our time. And I, as a professor, felt a certain responsibility to tackle this problem, deal with it, do research on it, and bring it into my teaching. And that's what I did. Um, I became interested in the whole question of how religions can both be peaceful and violent at the same time. And being at GW was also an inspiration because here you're surrounded by people who deal with international issues. So that when I started to get involved in this problem and do research on it, there were any number of resources available for me. You recently wrote a book on the ambiguity of peace and violence in the teachings of Judaism. Now, how is this exemplified in your faith as well as in other religions? Well, uh, <laughs> there are literally hundreds of examples that one could call upon because every major faith in every major period uh, has ambiguity when it comes to the issue of peace and violence. But let me just cite one that I think is very instructive. Uh, we see in the Bible, in Leviticus 19, a statement that many people are familiar with, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Most people, most Jews and Christians, regard that as a statement of inclusion. But there was always a strand in Judaism, and I want to emphasize a minority strand, uh, that saw this as a principle of exclusion. After all, who is the neighbor? If the neighbor is all of humanity, fine. But if the neighbor is only your fellow Jew, which is the way some Jews interpret it, um, it became a principle of, of exclusion. So here's a wonderful example of how a, t a text that is often taken for peaceful purposes can be interpreted as uh, in, in an exclusionary and potentially a violent way. Um, this is the kind of thing that I study. I try to see how the same texts can become peaceful or violent depending on who the interpreter is. Faith in the idea that peace and violence exist in religion touches upon some of the most sensitive aspects of our lives. Now how does one deal with such personal issues in an academic classroom? Well I think for a religion professor like myself this has to be one of the most challenging things that we have to deal with, um, especially on an issue like this as you, as you point out in your question. My approach generally in religion courses is tr to try to keep myself out of the course as much as possible in terms of my own personal religious beliefs. And I also urge my students to do the same. Uh, I tell them at the beginning of every semester, uh, there are Jews, Christians, Muslims, perhaps Hindus, Buddhists in this class. Sometimes there are often people who have no religion at all. Uh, but that for the purposes of this course, what we have to do is just be human beings and try to look at the matters as objectively as possible. This is not an easy thing to do, but that's part of my job as, professor, as a professor, to try to train students to think in these terms. Now, you have forged a special relationship with your colleague in our Department of Religion, Dr. Muhammad Fakfouri, a Muslim scholar whose country of birth is Iran. It's a friendship that led to the creation of a master's degree program in Islamic studies. Tell me more about the origins of this program and what you hope to accomplish. Well, I'll start with the second question first. What we hope to accomplish is to have a, a fine graduate program in Islamic studies, one that will teach students about classical Islam, but also teach them about uh, the challenges that Islam faces in, th in the international arena as well. Um, the origins of this program, there's a, there's a simple answer to that on some level, which is that uh, it started when Mohammed Fakhfouri, my colleague, came to me as chair of the religion department and said, we have lots of students who are interested in doing graduate work. So he and I put our heads together and decided to create a program. But I suppose if I want to give you a, a comprehensive answer to the question, I also have to talk about 
the deep personal friendship that I had with Mohammed before we planned this program. That was a big factor as well. He and I are the closest of friends, and I think it's an example of how personal, a personal friendship can bridge divides between religious communities. Here you have an Iranian Muslim Shiite and a Jewish American, and uh, I can tell you that we work together as well as anyone else, and we are the closest of friends. So there's a deeper lesson in here, I think, for everyone. What an amazing story, and especially how you can build connections across, across what seemingly Im impermeable divides. Uh, I understand th that you also work outside of the university, and that this work is very connected to your scholarship. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yes. Uh, when I began to take an interest in doing research in, in the wake of 9-11 on the issue of religious peace and religious violence, simultaneously I also became involved in a number of projects uh, involving interfaith dialogue, between, particularly between Jews, Christians, and Muslims. And I'm talking not just about religious leaders, but also about academics and politicians who were in these three communities who were interested in trying to deal with the problem of religious violence. Uh, and it's become a very important part of my identity as an academic. The hope was not just that I would teach about this in the ivory tower or write, write books that other scholars would read, but also that I would be in a position to actually make the world a better place. Um, and so this work has become very important to me outside of the university as a supplement uh, to what I do. Um, and we do get into very practical kinds of issues. It's not just about pure religious dialogue, it's about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, it's about the conflict between the uh, Islamic world and the West. We're trying to grapple with all of those things in these types of dialogues. Well, we'll have to end it there. I want to thank Dr. Eisen for taking the time to provide his insight on the topic of faith and the important work he does in contributing to our understanding. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me.